Hi, this is Teresa Pavlos, Editor-in-Chief of Dr. Bicuspid. I am with pharmacologist extraordinaire Tom Viola for another episode of Dental Dose. Today we're talking about cocaine and its secret, secret dental history. So uh, Tom, you had briefly mentioned in our local anesthetic episode for lidocaine um, that cocaine was actually used in the early days of dentistry. So can you talk a little bit more about the, the history of it? Well, didn't you say you were going to send out samples to everybody who watched this podcast? I'm pretty sure you did. Please don't email me. <laughs> did not Unless you have a topic idea. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do well, not have samples of that. <laughs> <laughs> no samples, no samples. This is all, uh, you know, all about cocaine and its its brief history uh, in dentistry. But, you know, if you go back to the early 1900s, cocaine was used in lots of different preparations. It was used in a lot of cough preparations. It was used in some asthma medications. Okay, realize that in the early 1900s, before the Harris Act and a few other acts that really established guidelines for maintaining you know, standards for drugs uh, efficacy and safety, there was a lot of what I like to call snake oil on the mm -hmm. market, okay? Where things could have purported or suggested uses or downright, hey, this stuff works, but there was absolutely nothing to back it up. There was no hard evidence, no clinical data, zero, okay? Mm -hmm. And so cocaine was used in lots of different preparations, but the bottom line is its use in dentistry was legitimate in the, uh, in the respect that cocaine is an anesthetic agent. Uh, it did does, not know that. It does work like anesthetic agents. So uh, cocaine is uh, much in the same family as the ester type anesthetic agents. Uh, it is a very effective topical anesthetic agent. So applied to a mucosal surface, it does the job. And cocaine is very interesting in that, unlike all the other anesthetic agents that we use uh, in dentistry, which are basal dilators, which actually lead to their own demise because when you apply them, they cause vasodilation, which causes the anesthetic to literally leave the site too quickly. So it kind of shortens its own activity. Cocaine is the only one that's an actual vasoconstrictor. Oh. So it doesn't hmm. need epidemic. Right. So cocaine did have its mark in dentistry because it is, relatively speaking, a good anesthetic agent in the fact that it didn't need a vasoconstrictor and was fairly long acting. Okay. As, an, as I said in the other episode, if you still used cocaine in dentistry, you'd never have a cancellation and people would show up hours early for their appointment. You'd never have a problem with your schedule. But uh, alas, we stopped using cocaine. And um, why was that? Well, because we had safer agents, okay? Procaine, obviously, Novocaine uh, came along and really stole uh, the seat from any other anesthetic agent we were using. And then right after that, lidocaine, as we said, came along and stole the seat from Procaine uh, because lidocaine as an anamide was considered safer. But I have to say, when, when, in the days when we used cocaine in dentistry, that's when dentistry was cool. I mean, you had <laughs> cocaine in the office. What cooler profession could there be? <laughs> I'm <Not> curious. <laughs> when when was this in dental history, and how like how was it used? Were they injecting people, or you have well, no it, idea? It was used both ways. It was used as an injectable agent, and it was used topically. But you know, this is like the late 1800s, early 1900s, really before you know the, the modern era of dentistry. Mm -hmm. So people say to me all the time, so talking about cocaine that's got to be like a schedule one substance like heroin and, and lsd and i'm like no cocaine enjoys actually schedule two status so if you understand how controlled substance schedules works uh, the, the dea puts drugs in buckets based on how addictive the substance is and cocaine is not in schedule one schedule one is where you find heroin lsd and and marijuana but that's a whole other episode right uh which means that the, F, the dea has said these drugs are so addictive, they have no accepted medical use. Cocaine does have an accepted medical use. And everybody wants to know, what is it? What, what, what do you use cocaine for in, in, in medicine? Uh, well, lots of things. I mean, I can remember in my early days as a pharmacist making Brompton cocktail where cocaine was used uh, to offset the, the sedating effects of morphine in, in patients who were taking high doses of morphine for you know 
pain as a result of cancer and some things. But the, its use now mostly uh, is as a topical anesthetic uh, in the world of eye surgery and in, in the world of ear, nose, and throat procedures. Okay, so who are the cool mm -hmm. kids now? It's the eye docs and the ENTs that are the cool kids. Uh, we're no longer the cool ones, but okay. <laughs> but cocaine does have an accepted medical use. You can, if you look it up, you, it can be so it can be bought and sold as a legitimate topical anesthetic agent, typically in concentrations of I believe it's four percent. Um, but uh, it's a it's a long and winding road for cocaine. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that is so crazy and so fascinating, um, and it also like is a good reminder of how old dentistry is as a profession. Um, I know that even writing about the pandemic there are guidelines from the ADA for their ethics that worked in the last flu pandemic a hundred years ago. And yeah. um, dentists have been working on various anesthetics for more than a century. Um, and again, if you go even further back in history, people have been doing dental care for forever. Um, and so it's just, it's very, it's always fascinating to kind of talk about how, uh, substances evolve and the profession evolves. And I feel like cocaine is kind of a really interesting analogy for that. It kind of puts it into perspective, um, at least to me. I think it's very fascinating. And it came with its own theme song, Eric Clapton. Yeah, come on. I guess. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> I was like in the 1800s. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Well, thank Although, to be you. fair, Bon Jovi sings a song called No Became. So I don't know, I don't, just, just to be fair. We might have to do an episode on the best dental uh, rock songs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Social media exclusive. Um, that's so fascinating. Do we miss anything about the history of cocaine as an anesthetic or cocaine in dentistry? Seems like it was pretty straightforward. It was a brief uh, history, to say the least. It didn't last very long, but it's it's a note. Uh, it's a good point and a good note to remember that, as you said, uh, a, a long time ago in dentistry, you know, we we tried various things, and then we ended up finding agents that really did work for us that were dependable. So that now, in some cases, you could almost say dentistry is boring. Like <laughs> we know exactly what we're going to use. We know exactly what it's going to do, and it. And so we, you know, it, the, the sort of wild west approach to dentistry is long gone, which is good, I guess, for us and our patients. But I, yeah. I like to think back to the days when cocaine was our was our first choice because uh, it must have been an interesting time to be a dentist. It would have been. I can't even imagine what that like dental appointment would be and all of the different tools. That was before gloves. That was. <laughs> I don't. I maybe before masks. I have no idea. It was a very different, very different time to go to the dental office. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Tom Viola, for sharing that very fascinating dental history fact. Um, if you are interested in learning more about other dental drugs, uh, we have episodes related to local anesthetics below, marijuana below, and we will continue to talk about various anesthetics and non-anesthetics um, on the show. So thanks again, Tom, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Lizzie.